Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I've been running so much uh, for the last three days that I haven't had a chance to say hello uh, and uh, haven't had a chance to hear all of the wonderful things that uh, the solution winners uh, have brought, but I have read about the individual projects and I will get further briefed in the next couple of days by having the chance to be with you. We're moving, for me, my calendar is now moving into the SDSN phase because it's been the General Assembly uh, and uh, going back and forth to the UN. Um, and we're on the west side and they're on the east side. And so it's been a, a lot of transport uh, in, in the last three days. Let me just say a, a little bit about uh, what I've seen uh, during the General Assembly. Uh, basically, global society, global academia, that's a lot of us, uh, and uh, global business is way ahead of the politicians in general. Uh, and maybe I got the worst dose of politicians in the morning uh, yesterday because the General Assembly opened with two of the worst politicians on the planet. Uh, <laughs> Bolsonaro first, who gave a perfectly awful talk. Uh, and then, uh, if you can imagine worse, we have a Trump uh, who gave an even worse talk. Although I have a sneaking suspicion that both talks were written by the same person, actually. <laughs> and, and I think that that may literally be true because there were certain nasty themes that permeated both speeches about national sovereignty and nations and anti-globalism and a bunch of nonsense. But the day ended well with the opening of impeachment proceedings against uh, <laughs> President Trump, uh, which he richly deserved for that awful speech that he gave. Uh, and um, I felt pretty good about that. And what I've also felt quite good about is how many solutions are being developed right now. You are doing wonderful work uh, in solutions uh, across many different fields uh, and many different local realities. And this is also very important because local context, culture, ecology, geography affects uh, the uh, kinds of solutions that make sense. And this is uh, at the essence of the whole notion of a global network of solutions that you're finding them, sharing them, and making it possible for others to learn. And we've had a wonderful day also of businesses talking about solutions. And that is very, very exciting for me. Uh, I just arrived from a fantastic discussion with uh, the Swedish company Scania, uh, which makes big trucks. Uh, and they're completely committed to decarbonizing their fleet. And even though I do almost nothing but talk about this subject morning, noon, and night, every day, seven days a week, uh, 52 weeks of the year, I learned a lot in the last few minutes from what this company is doing. I'm going to show you a picture, actually. I, maybe this is so obvious to you, but I've never seen it before. You know, one of the big puzzles is how do you make large trucks uh, zero emission? We know for vehicles, light duty vehicles, that electrification is uh, almost surely the right way. But for large trucks, the problem is that uh, the uh, size of batteries right now, given uh, the uh, uh, battery performance, takes up too much room and it's not economical. And so there's a problem of electrification of large vehicles that uh, is basically solved for light duty vehicles. And uh, so I was asking, and they have a perfectly sensible solution that I've never actually thought about, which is you can't quite see it, but it's a giant truck being like a city trolley with uh, over, uh, over highway 
a grid, we don't have that anywhere in the United States as far as I know, uh, anywhere tried, and it's only at the beginning in Europe. But what a smart, straightforward idea, which is you don't need the batteries uh, if you uh, have the green electricity uh, powering the highway system. And uh, what the CEO of Scania was explaining to me is that 80% or so of their heavy freight is on a very small proportion of the roads, which is basically the highway system. Uh, so if you just devote one lane of the highways, you can actually create uh, a corridor that is zero emission with existing technologies, uh, and it's a wonderful solution. And I said, oh, and if you've got that one corridor, they can also be autonomous. And glint in his eye, yes, that's part of the plan too, uh, so that we can move to autonomy of vehicles at the same time. And along that corridor can also be what you need for that, which is 5G, uh, a heavy concentration of access. So suddenly you've made the transport corridor wonderfully uh, efficient and green, and the technologies are obviously within reach. And I confess, I hadn't thought about that uh, as a solution. I imagined that it would have to be a hydrogen fuel cell solution or further advances on batteries. And then I asked, what do you do within the cities? And he answered, well, within the cities, we're already all electric. This is uh, basically the answer even for freight uh, because it's uh, local uh, transport. But then he explained that uh, to make the cities work better, you could cut down tremendously on the number of trucks within the cities because most of the trucks are carrying a very small fraction of their potential load. And with digitization of the information about which freight is going where, it's possible to make a perimeter around the city that the big trucks are coming in and they're transferring uh, the freight into a very small number of electric vehicles because that's what the digital information will allow. And I asked, well, could that be automatic also? He said, yes, that's what we're doing. So that can be autonomously uh, done because they have a modular design of uh, how the freight is uh, going to be uh, built on top of uh, the, the, the transport uh, um, infrastructure. So fantastic things can be done once we have the determination and the knowledge to do it. We heard earlier today at the conference from another fantastic company. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you was at the discussion with Pat Brown uh, of Impossible Foods, uh, but he had the very bright idea that given the extraordinary burden of uh, beef consumption on the planet to uh, make uh, what is surely a new term, and that is plant-based meat. Uh, plant, yeah, plant-based meat. So he just calls it meat, uh, but they're making meat products uh, out of plants uh, and uh, for impossible foods. Uh, the breakthrough that they've had with the beef is to get an extremely strong uh, taste of beef into this plant-based uh, food by uh, heme protein, uh, which was uh, the result of uh, their research work that the heme protein gives a lot of the taste uh, to uh, beef and it can be uh, produced uh, by uh, yeast, in fact, I think it is uh, for Impossible Foods. Uh, and then put into a plant-based protein. And the implications of that for easing the burden on the physical environment are absolutely startling. Uh, I only had a small part of the imagination of all of the different dimensions of ecological pressure that will be uh, relieved from this, including 
an obvious point that we should remember that I would have forgotten on a first pass through this, which is that the amount of antibiotics being used in beef production is so high that it is one of the absolutely dire risks of creating uh, mass resistance to uh, large classes of uh, antibiotics and that the pressure, therefore, of moving to a uh, plant-based meat diet uh, would also have implications such as vastly reduced industrial uses of antibiotics and therefore vastly prolonging the usefulness and life of the antibiotics. But that was just one of the many aspects of the solution that he offered. We also had the Vice President of Sustainability of 3M, which is a major materials uh, company in the United States about all of the different ways that their products are being redesigned and reconfigured to be sustainable. So we should feel quite optimistic, actually. Uh, technological solutions plus impeachment will get us the sustainable <laughs> development goals. So I think we're getting very, very close. Uh, thank you for organizing uh, this uh, wonderful solutions uh, group. Uh, I know in each country how happy uh, the, the response was. So congratulations to all of you for the fantastic work that you're doing. You're real heroes of the SDGs. We will make your solutions known and spread. That's a core part of our network. And thanks to all of you for your leadership. Thanks.